Hi, this is Brad Caleb. My PhD I earned as a post hole digger at the Desert University. We're talking today about Hootwind, the road ahead for Little Red Riding Hood. My global view, we do not have a press freedom. We have a biased, corporate, controlled propaganda arm of the deep state, according to Ben Garrison, a loyalist to Trump and his point of view. He further states that Julian Assange reported the truth and as a consequence he has been put through hell, legal and otherwise, as punishment. The deep states want him imprisoned for life in America, even though he is not an American citizen. Assange needs to be pardoned, even though he has done nothing wrong and released. President Trump needs to stop listening to Pompeo on this matter and instead listen to American patriots who know the importance of real journalism and its value to our republic. Freer sounds, according Ben Garrison, a loyalist to Mr. Trump. If I had been the author of The Manchurian Candidate, I would have written that book in 1959. Although I was only nine years old, I did read it in my teenage years. I could have been told that the principles do not change, and since the art of war is as cold, old as humanity, I would like to put it in another way. As an author, I have come to understand that it takes a lot of research in order to understand and present a simple idea. I like to talk about old, I did read it in my teenage years. It's a political thriller about the son of a prominent U.S. political family brainwashed into being an unwitting assassin for a communist conspiracy. It's a beautiful thing that can be compared to the art of war. For principles do not change and since the art of war is as old as humanity, because it goes back way longer than 1500 years ago, I would like to put it in a different way. Let us say, you want to change the human body. You want to fix a mistake or repair or improve something to that human body. If you are going to reprogram human genetic material, you need a delivery system and nothing works better than a virus. It's like a suitcase. You pack in genetic mutation and affect the body, which lowers itself to the target. Getting it where you want and how you want it is a nightmare. Unless you have a map, for instance. If you have some very minor alterations made in the chromosomes, it can cause a rise of a small 1.5% in your mitochondria protein uptake. This small percentage will cause an acceleration in the cell and its tempo, muscle efficiency, oxygenation, intelligence will increase, and much more than that, like neuro acceleration and nerve elasticity. It affects sensor function and pain suppression and endurance. It appears the most exciting and genomic targeting in science history. Doesn't that sound awesome? So today I'm not only talking as an author and a reader, but also as a person that has been with the privilege of being married 44 years and counting. My wife and I met a long time ago, it feels like it. But in the process of being married, I noticed that I learned an awful lot from my very precious wife. One of them is loyalty, friendship, camaraderie, going together through ups and downs. And when I say ups and downs, I mean ups and downs. We went through different situations, like when we just got married in 76, our little boy passed away in my arms in 1978. I tell you, I felt so terrible. And at the same time, supposedly we were set. I had my couple of businesses. I was a uh, counselor public speaker, we traveled a lot, we had different businesses, all the cars and all the fancy stuff was there, was there, living in a big house right 
besides the Minister of Finance in the Netherlands, and what have you. But when I have my little boy in my arms, Dad, I tell you, my friend, nothing compares to life. All the good stuff that I believed was a blessing and important meant nothing if I just could get my little boy back. After that, we traveled and sold everything, and we went to Canada. And for 35 years, we went through a tremendous experience, a wonderful experience. Two wonderful kids born, born ago, and I tell you, life is precious. But in the same token, I came to know another side of life that I had heard about. I just read something about Mr. Ben Garrison, a loyalist to Mr. Trump. He believes there is a bomb. And you know, Mr. Trump and Ben Garrison are right in that respect. There is a swamp. But the only problem with the swamp is that Mr. Trump is part and parcel, like I am part and parcel of that swamp, and you all are part and parcel of that swamp. As terrible as it sounds, folks, we are working in a place that is not very pleasant. It's an other kingdom. Some of you have grown up to become believers in some kind of denomination, whether it's Roman Catholic Church or the Protestants or Seven Days Adventists or whatever you want to call yourself. Or maybe you say, I'm not a Christian, I'm a Buddhist. Or maybe you're someone that goes and follows Muslim beliefs. But whatever it is that moves you in this society, you must have come to the same conclusion. What is wrong with spirituality? And this is what I shared in my book. Working on Wall Street was awesome for me. It was something that I always dreamt of. But when I worked with a private bank, I saw certain things and my eyes opened up and I realized that we are all taken in. Somebody is deceiving us. And that's why the, the book is called Deception Protocol Blueprint for the Prodigal Son and Daughter. Folks, we are all deceived and we have to wake up. If I would have been the author of the Manchurian Candidate, I could have told you that principles do not change. And the art of war is as old as humanity because it was written in 1500, actually 1500 years ago. But now, having gone through my experience in Canada and learning an aspect of life, I can put it in another way. Let's say you want to change the human body. You want to fix a mistake or repair or improve something. If you are going to reprogram human genetic material, you need a delivery system. And nothing works better than a virus. It's like a suitcase. You pack in genetic mutation and effects which lowers itself to the target. Getting it to where you want and how you want it, that, my friend, is a nightmare unless you have a map. For instance, if you have some very minor alterations made in the chromosomes, it can cause a rise of a small 1.5% in your mitochondria protein uptake. This small percentage will cause an acceleration in the cell and its tempo, affecting muscle efficiency and oxygenation. Intelligence will increase, and much more than that, like neuroacceleration and nerve elasticity. It affects sense of function and pain suppression and endurance. It appears the most exciting in genomic targeting in science history. Doesn't that sound awesome? You still might be wondering what in the world is a Manchurian candidate to do with President Trump? And what is that other stuff that you're talking about? Well, let's go back for a moment. The Manchurian Candidate was actually an, a novel written by Richard Gordon, first published in 1959. A political thriller about the son of a prominent U.S. political family 
brainwashed into being an unwitting assassin for the communist conspiracy. And it is something else. Just like the video explores of art of war, it's an essential teaching by Sun Tzu. He's concerned with modern warfare. Now we're talking about a gentleman that lived about 1500 to 2000 years ago in a Chinese history. He considered the art of war the most important, important part of his life. He studied it, he wrote about it, and he shared how you could influence people's mindset in political, politics, in games, and in business. Now, I call it personally PMS. It has nothing to do with the disease that we know it of or the monthly problems that many women have. But we call the P for politics, M for money, and S for spirituality or religion. There is a war going on among those PMSers. It feels like they are contradicting each other. But if you have been able to read the book, you will understand there is a commonality there that politics and money and spirituality are used to control people. And that drifts away from a philosophy and, and brings us also we're back again back to the pandemic and what we are facing today. What do you do about it? Or what can you do? Because quite often it is not so much what you're going through, but how do you respond when you face something that you cannot really control? The art of war presents a philosophy. It's a state of mind, a psychology for managing conflicts and winning battles. But isn't life a battle in its own? And facing the pandemic, as many have seen now in the United States, over 200,000 people died. More people died during this last pandemic than in First World War I and II. I believe including the uh, war in Vietnam and in Korea. It's terrible. And my cousins go out to each and every family member that lost somebody during this pandemic. Not just for the United States, but also for those that were affected in Europe, in Asia, all over the world. Now we talked about the art of war, a sense of philosophy, a state of mind, a psychology for menacing conflicts and winning battles. If we ever fought a battle, then it is a battle of the wits. Can we keep our wits together? In Taoism philosophy, Tao means the way, a principle of the universe to which everything is connected. And most of us are familiar with the yin and the yang, life and death, action and inaction. Which is why the highest victory attained without contesting in a fight, yin and yang and yang. In ancient Chinese philosophy, there are the concept and a contrast, two opposites, like conflicting forces, complementing and they intersect but are codependent in the natural world. They may give rise to each other as they join up to one another. This is what we read in The Supreme Art of War, written by Sun Tzu. Now, in order to captivate them, the three lines that I believe can formulate the Supreme Art of War Know when to fight and when not to fight. Avoid what is healthy and strike at it when it's weak. Number two, learn how to deceive the enemy. Appear weak when you're strong and strong when you're weak. And number three, know your strength and weaknesses. If you know the enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the results of a hundred battles. Sounds awesome if you are a warrior, but what if you are not? So just to capitalize on everything, we talked about the Manchurian candidate. We talked about the Little Red Riding Hood. 
We talked about the art of war. What do they have in common? At the outset, you would, if you would have told me to stop writing, if I would have been the author, you said, stop writing that nonsense, for the American sentiment would never lower itself to that level. That means in 1959, the American mentality was completely different than what it is today. Being vulnerable is something that is not fun. And welcome to the changing world order cycles. First and foremost, currency cycles are changing and trend setting uh, cycles. They will not suit your lifestyle. In one word, astonishing to live in a minimalist versus maximalist world. Are you feeling the burn of daily stress, also known as oxidative stress, as if the life sucked out of you? Do you want to take control over your stress levels? If you're feeling overwhelmed, you are not alone. We all deal with stress and anxiety. And to be very frank, this is what causes us to age. If we know how to deal with stress levels that are thrown at us, whether we go through a pandemic or a war or a disease or maybe dying or maybe death, of a family member, there is a way of finding peace. But that peace comes from the Father, the Creator. And some of us have totally thrown that away because you have personal experiences that were not funny. But folks, I urge you, pay attention because all these skirmishes that we have seen whether it's called a pandemic, whether it's called Trump, whether it's called something else in your country, it doesn't matter. Any stress level is focusing on one thing, to create commotion where your peace is gone. And peace is what you need at the moment. And there is a way, like Tao, the way, there is a way to get that peace back. But you have to to listen to the Father. There's a prayer that we pray quite often. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. We all know this, but have we been able to forgive our enemies? If I don't like certain political people, can I forgive them? Can I love Mr. Trump? Can I love Mr. whoever is in charge in your country? Can I forgive my enemies? Worse, can I forgive myself for the many goof-ups I made in my life? Have you been able to forgive? Because with forgiveness, it's not that you forgive the other person. Forgiveness is for the healing of your soul. Once you start learning the path of forgiveness, your life will increase and you will get peace that passes all understanding. And that peace, my friend, you can't take pills, you can't take anything else because that peace is a spiritual peace and it can only come from the Father. And the Father said, I gave you a way, the truth, and the life. Find that, and you will be an overcomer. God bless you. And remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. And if you are a survivor, then you know that you can still make that decision. Or do you keep your back channels open in case you have to stave off disaster? I mentioned it before, God created all men and he gave us women. He also gave us the brain to understand them. And it's called patience. Now there is a saying that says, if a person has no faith, he has no patience. If we see the logic in taking control of biohacking, in other words, you take control over your own health, spiritually, as well as mentally, we will succeed. So let the past go. 
Otherwise, it will hinder the future when it counts. And folks, it is not a stress test that we're doing. It is for real. Please pay attention. Tough times never last, but tough people do. God bless you. Bye for now.